friends, today we're going to talk about all the books that I read this year in 2020 so far and I'm going to rank them from worst to best. Just to give you a bit of an overview of the books that I read so far in this year. I read 45 books so far this year, which is absolutely ridiculous because last year I read 40 books. So the fact that now in half a year I've already read more than that is just unbelievable. Yes, I know it's already August, so we're already way past this half year, but we don't care about that on this channel. Let's just talk about the books that I read. I've created five tiers, a uh, tier, a disappointing tier, a nice tier, a great tier, and then last but not least, a fantastic tier. And we're gonna go through all of them. I don't have a bad tier because so far this year I haven't really read like a one-star book. So that's a good sign. Let's start with the worst tier. Ugh. There's only one book in this tier and that is The Shadows Between Us by Trisha Levenseller. A dark YA fantasy romance that felt underdeveloped in pretty much every aspect. I have a full spoiler-free review in which I talk about how it failed at creating anti-heroes and why I think this should actually have been an adult romance book. So if you want to watch that, you can go to the link over there. The next tier is disappointing. At the bottom of this tier we have Semiosis. This is a science fiction first contact about the idea that aliens might not actually be animals like we are. And although I really appreciated that concept, I would have enjoyed this story more if it was just an essay that explored that idea without all the story attached to it. Which I think says enough about what my opinions were on the story itself. Lord of the Flies. Uh, I'll probably have my booktube card revoked for not enjoying this classic, but this really just wasn't for me. If you really want to know my thoughts on this one, I recommend watching my wrap up on it. But I guess I can just say that the themes of this book didn't really speak to me. Next up is The Library of the Unwritten. I feel like this book and I matched on Tinder, we had like the same interests, we really should have just been perfect soulmates, but then the date itself turned out to be actually really boring and I didn't actually really get myself to care. That's what this book was. Great concept, but failed to make me care. Next up we have a romance novel, The Kiss Quotient. I didn't know it was possible for a book to have too many smutty scenes, but here we are. <laughs> I really enjoyed the personal life stories of the love interest and the main character more than I enjoyed their actual romance. A very unpopular opinion on booktube, I think. <laughs> then we have the Truly Devious Trilogy. The first one is actually the best one out of them all, but I just wanted to put them all together here. This mystery YA novel is like junk food. Like, it's really bad, but it's so addicting. <laughs> oh, this is basically just one mystery story chucked into three parts, and every single revelation felt like a slap in the face, like, haha, bet you didn't see that coming. It's because we didn't foreshadow it. Next up, another book that I really should have loved, and that is The Bear and the Nightingale. This has Russian folklore, it's dark, it's magical, atmospheric. Should have been my thing. I'm just kind of over main characters whose sole personality trait is that they don't want to marry and that they actually want to do all the things that the men are allowed to do. And I think I'd say that we're kind of at the point where we can write women with more interesting personalities than that. I'm just saying. All right, now we're moving on to the next tier, which is nice. So we're getting in average to good territory here. The book that just made it into the nice category is Outspoken. This is a non-fiction book that told me how to speak up in an office setting. I don't ever am in an office setting, but it did teach me some things about feminism, so that's great. Then we have Deaf Republic by Ilya Kaminsky, the first and only poetry collection that I read this year, and it mostly taught me that I have a really hard time understanding poetry. I have a full vlog in which I struggle <laughs> reading this book, so if you want to watch that, I'll link it on the screen. My overall experience was positive, though. Then we have Coraline, the only time that I'll admit that I liked the movie better than the book. This was good, and the only reason this book kind of disappointed me was because 
I love the movie so much and I honestly think it can't live up to that because it's exactly the same as the movie except without the cool stop motion animation. Then we have The Little Prince, the classic story about the appreciation of childhood innocence and friendship. I enjoyed this but it just didn't blow my socks off. A wrinkle in time. Sometimes you read a book that you appreciate and enjoy and then after you finish it you just completely forget about everything. <laughs> I know that most people found this middle grade science fiction book to be super bizarre, but I actually really liked that aspect. Then let me tell you about A Song of Wraith and Ruin. I listened to this audiobook the day that it came out. When I listen to like a new release, I always kind of think to myself, is this going to be like a super popular, well-loved book or not? And I thought, oh, this book is nice, but it's not like really fantastic, so it's probably not gonna get super popular, but apparently I was the only one who thought that because everyone else that I've seen reading this book absolutely adored it, so I guess I just missed something, but I liked it, but again, my socks are still on. Then we have You Should See Me in a Crown. Now, I'm not a marketing expert, but I think this book has really bad SEO. This is a super cute YA romance between two girls. The only reason this is not higher on the list is because I have a heart made of coal and I only like romance if there's intense suffering and yearning before they get together. But if you do really like fluffy cute romances, especially if you're looking for one that has an LGBT romance at the forefront and a black main character, then I do still really highly recommend it because I think a lot of people would really love this book. Then we have Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman. Solid nonfiction about how we're all irrational pieces of biased trash. And when I say solid, I really mean like, this is like a 500 page book. <laughs> then we have The Hating Game. And as an avid lover of the hate to love romance trope, I really enjoyed it. But then about halfway through the book, they stopped hating each other and it just went downhill for me from there. <laughs> Just goes to show that I really do only like to see people suffer in romance, apparently. Then we have The Star-Touched Queen, a YA fantasy that's super mesmerizing, beautiful descriptions, very magical, and then halfway throughout the story the author suddenly realized, wait, this is a YA fantasy, so we need to put in some kind of adventure plotline and that's where it kind of went downhill. I understand that it would be too risky for the author and the publishers to just write a book that's just like mesmerizing beautiful descriptions without a plot, but I think I would have actually enjoyed it more if it was like that. Then we have The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. I really appreciated all the political philosophy that was explored in this book. I actually would have liked to see more of it even, but I just didn't think this book did what The Hunger Games was so good at, because The Hunger Games did explore some societal issues and then on top of that also had a really interesting, fun plotline with great interesting characters. And I know that this book focused more on like the political stuff, but it really would have benefited, especially since this is like a 500 page book, really would have benefited from some more interesting characters and like a more interesting plot. Then I have here My Sister Rosa, a mystery about a teenage boy whose sister is a psychopath. It's really cool and creepy. I just would have liked to see more sister psychopath and less teenage boy story. And now we're moving on to the great category. The first book in this category is The Hidden Life of Trees, a really cool nonfiction about trees. Did you know trees can communicate with each other? It's cool. Now you're probably thinking, Leonie, are you seriously recommending a book about trees? Could you get any more hipster? And the answer is yes, because the next books that I want to talk about are about feminism. <laughs> I'm gonna put these three feminist books just at the same place in the tier. The two books by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie are really short and great introductions to intersectional feminism and Bad Feminist is especially really great if you like feminist media critique. Then we get to The Obelisk Gate, which is the second book in the Broken Earth trilogy. I found this to be kind of second book syndrome, but I really like the themes that were explored in this one and it also made me cry. <laughs> then we have So You Want to Talk About Race. This is a really understandable entry-level book into talking about oppression and anti-racism. So I learned a lot from this book and it also works really great as an audiobook because it kind of listens like a podcast. So honestly, no reason to not pick this one up. Then we have If We Were Villains. This has murder, 
theater, Shakespeare, three things that I have no affinity with, but I still really enjoyed this dark academia murder mystery. Next up we have another non-fiction, it's Humankind. Do you often lose your faith in humanity? Do you want to restore your faith in humanity? Well then you should read this book! <laughs> this book counters the prevailing negative image of humankind. For example, it talks about how those famous experiments like the prison experiments aren't very reliable. It's just a breath of fresh air and I really think this is a book we all need right now, basically. I know it sounds like it's really big, like it's 500 pages, but honestly, you fly through it because it's super readable. Then we have Nevermore. This book single-handedly proves why middle grade fantasy is so great. It's magical, it's fun, it's happy. Sign me up. <laughs> then we have the Avatar The Search graphic novels. The only reason this is so high is because my 12 year old self would not allow me to put this any lower, but this is very solid. You know, there's one question that plagues every single After the Last Airbender fan at night, and that is what happened to Zuko's mom? The answers are in these graphic novels. We're really getting at the top of the great tier now, and the next one is Daisy Jones and the Six. Usually when I read audiobooks, I tend to not retain the stories as much or really enjoy the stories as much, but this one is the exception. I still remember everything so vividly. The characters are so real and genuine, and I recommend this super great 70s band novel to everyone. And then we have A Conjuring of Light by V.E. Schwab. I don't even know how to talk about this book anymore because I feel like I've said everything. It has adventure. It has elemental magic. So much action. There are pirates. Pirates, guys. Pirates. All right, and that concludes the great tier. Now we're going to the last tier that has eight books and that is the fantastic tier, the best books that I've read this year so far. First up, I have 1984. I don't really know how to talk about this book because I feel like everything has already been said about this book. But yeah, you know, authoritarian governments, bad. Censorship, bad. Just read this. I feel like everyone should just read this. Then we have Eleanor Elephant is completely fine. <laughs> this is a book about a woman who has nothing that's slowly picking herself up and learning to appreciate herself more. How could I not cry at that? How could I not love that? Then we have my current obsession, The Fifth Season. I don't have a copy of it because I immediately lend it out. This is one of those books where everything just so perfectly comes together at the end. It's unlike any fantasy that I've ever read. It has a very sciencey magic system. It explores themes of oppression and parenthood really well. Just wonderful. Then we have my new favorite classic, and that is The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. Do you want to read a book where the main character is a complete idiot, makes terrible decisions, and yet you still love him? Do you want a classic that has beautiful writing, yet is still very readable? Do you like characters having pretentious conversations? And more importantly, do you want a corruption arc and capital angst? Read this book. Next up, I ranked The Hunger Games. <laughs> Is it weird that I've put The Hunger Games above 1984? Probably yes, but I just appreciate that The Hunger Games has both an interesting critique on society and has really interesting characters and a lot of fun in the plot. Now we're really getting to the books that I, where I, I just don't know. They're all very close together. The ranking could also be switched up. I don't, I just, I love them all. The first one is Radio Silence. It's kind of as if the author just like reached in my head and just took out my brain and just turned it into a book. <laughs> I'm not usually a fan of YA Contemporary, but this one was so beautiful and so genuine and so real and really spoke to me a lot that I really think it's gonna be a new favorite. Then of course we have Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. I don't even know what to say to you anymore. <laughs> it's dark academia, university setting, occult magic, darkness, a main character with an interesting past, how could I not like this? I wanted to say that you can never go wrong if you just tick all my boxes with a book, but then I remembered that The Shadows Between Us exist, and that one ticked all my boxes, and yet I didn't really enjoy it, so... Anyway, this book is good. <laughs> and then the last book that I put on number one for today is also the first book that I read this year, and that is The Tao of Pooh. <laughs> this is a blend between fiction and nonfiction that explains Taoism using Winnie the Pooh. The story is basically the author talking 
with Winnie the Pooh and he's explaining Taoism to him and illustrating those ideas using Winnie the Pooh stories because Winnie the Pooh is apparently actually a really great example of a Taoist person. Now if that doesn't sound like a masterpiece to you I really liked the story, it was a reread for me and the second time around I appreciated it even more. Every time I read this book I just feel warm inside and I recommend it to everyone. And those were all the books that I read so far this year ranked from worst to best. Let me know if you saw any books in my ranking that you would have definitely put somewhere else in the ranking. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to follow me on Twitter or Instagram the links are in my description and I will see you soon in another video. Goodbye!